what they go do with me now. I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm poking them down. We turn the smiles into frowns. Gang hop out, then we clear on the Hey guys, we're in a new episode of Talk of the Town. Today we got a special guest. Jay Easy. Facts. So, to get you warmed up, we're going to play a little game. Okay, just answer first thing that comes to your mind or however you're feeling. Um, uh, what's your sign? Sagittarius. Three things you want to you would bring on a deserted island. My fitted, my these right here. Any pair of fours really that I got. On a deserted island. And my bay putty. Okay. Um, favorite lyric or punchline. Favorite lyric of mine. Yeah. Um, I think my money is gay. It's too many men on top of one another. That's my shit. Okay. Um, what's your favorite food? Favorite food, probably steak and rice. Okay, SmackDown or Raw? SmackDown or Raw. raw. Okay, drill music or Jersey Club music? Um, Drill music. Talking about drill music? Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, how do you answer your phone? I'd be like, you're... <laughs> Last person you text? Last, probably uh, my girl. And um, what's one place you want to visit? Tokyo. Okay. Tokyo sounds cool. So, um, so let us know how you got started into music, though. So, how I really got into it, fucking, I got held back in, like, eighth grade. So, from there, like, all my friends went to, like, high school and shit. And I just... You're the last nigga in eighth grade. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> so, like, I'm going to school, and I'm really not, like, just making friends at that point when I got held back. So I was like more in my mind, mm-hmm. and I don't know. I just started writing stuff down, watching like a lot of Eminem on YouTube and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he kind of inspired me to just start writing. So I would write the most insane shit, just like funny shit about anything. Mm-hmm. And then um, I would say, fast forward to me being like 18 years old, I started taking it more serious. In 2017, and um, I started recording by this studio by my school, okay. by my high school. That was the first studio you went to? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout that out. was a studio by your high school? Yeah, yeah, shout out Portier. It was like some some older guy, he had um equipment in his basement. Okay, okay. And had people go record. Mm-hmm. But then I switched to a studio... In town that everybody goes to probably right now. Mm-hmm. And shout out my manager because he owns that studio. Shout out Goon. And yeah, I started recording him OD mm-hmm. for me. And started taking it more serious from there. Okay. And like who was, it? so you said Eminem was somebody who's watching. Who else? Anybody else? Um, well, before Eminem, it was like 50, Wayne, okay. um, Kanye. And shit, I would even say like Michael Jackson, cause like I just knew I was gonna be famous for something kind of vibe. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Even like whether it was playing football, cause I was like my first love. I wanted to like really be a football so player. So football was a dub I, one. When I stopped growing, that ass though. When I stopped growing, cause I'm five two, bro. But on the field, so like I was very growing? skilled, huh? When did you stop growing? I found that I stopped growing at like, like sixteen. Okay. I think. So around there, yeah. When you turned eighteen, you was just like, it's a dub. Like I was just I like, know. nah, because rap was always on the side, like uh-huh. in the side of my mind too already. Yeah. But yeah, football was really my shit. Like. Okay. okay football was your shit. Got into music. Started going to the um studio by your school. And then, like, I guess, when did you start releasing? You shoot music videos at 18? Or? Um, I shot, like, one cringy-ass music video. <laughs> it's still out? We can see it? Nah, I deleted that shit. But there's <laughs> another cringy one, too, that's out on my YouTube, J-Easy. Okay. Yeah, it's called, like, Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Why is it cringy? You just Why watching, is it cringy? You hate watching yourself, like, when you was younger. So. Yeah. I mean, I kind of looked the same from then. Because, like... I, my looks, like, develop quick. Like, I always had, like, the beard. You'll see the beard and shit, but, like... So, why is it cringy? Like, what... Why is it cringy? Just it? the way I was moving in the video, bro. <laughs> like, comfortable yet? Nah, nah, nah. I was 
too comfortable. Okay. And I was just like, nah. <laughs> nah. Okay, so you feel like you develop your swag now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like a more of a way of being, yeah. Okay. All right. So how did you meet your manager now? Because they own the studio. How did oh, you meet him? Because when he opened up the studio, a friend of mine, uh, shout out TJ, he put me on. Okay. To his studio and that for me. Okay, so yeah. when did you confirm like you wanted him to be a manager then? Um, probably like the end of last year or beginning of last year or something like that. Yeah, so kind of recent. Yeah, yeah, because it started getting serious because... Um, started going viral. Yeah, I started going viral for like doing the running shit. Mm-hmm. And he's the one backpedaling when I'm running. So like we kind of do everything together in a way. He shoot my videos. He um he engineer my shit. Okay. So. so y'all locked in already? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you're from New York, but you're from Middle. I'm Middle from, Town, well, originally I'm from the Bronx, okay, so the and then I moved to Middletown. Okay, so how was that move? You moved when you was in like high school, middle school? I was, I was eight young years old. Young. I was, yeah, I was young. I was like in third grade. Okay. So you didn't really remember much of the Bronx, I guess. Did you? Um, I've had some like moments that I remember in the Bronx. Like, I don't remember living there, but, okay. but like, like Did obviously I didn't go office? through like the... The high school phases. The high school phases yeah. in, in the city, you feel mm-hmm. me? So, yeah. But I definitely <laughs> remember the Bronx. Okay. So, growing up in Middletown, how was that? Growing up in Middletown? Yeah. Um, it was it was calm. Like, I was into sports early for me, mm-hmm. ball and shit. So, like, I was kind of, like, in my own world okay. type shit. And, like, with the people that, for me. Okay, so getting Same into thing. your creative process, though, like, do you feel like Middletown helped you get creative with music, or was you traveling more, or, like, how did you get into your creative scene? I would say just listening to a lot of music okay. helped me get there. Um, shit, watching anime helped me get there, especially as of recently. Okay. Uh, but definitely Middletown, too, because, shit, I made a whole fucking song. Yeah, I was going to say, so, like, your punchlines be like funny and then like a little you know what I'm saying? So how did do you plan for your punchlines to be funny or like how does I that like happen? I like to think of it that way to a certain extent. Okay. But it's more like I don't know, I, f- I like try to follow the formats of like the goats and like how they do punchlines and shit like that. Okay. But yeah. Okay, so walk us through when you first started blowing up on TikTok. Okay, so it was 2021, October-ish, mm-hmm. and I had this song called Pink Eye, okay. and that one is a funny song. It w- it wasn't really meant to be, like, some serious shit, mm-hmm. but I felt like I just needed something to, like, that was catchy. Like, almost like, but why the fuck this sound, sa- like, why is he saying that, but why the fuck does this sound Valid for me, like like vocal wise and shit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then I winded up doing a heart where uh, shout out my god brother. I did in his building. I did some like heart shit. If they see, they know what I'm talking about. For me with pink eye, you could look up pink eye on TikTok and you'll see me going like this with the heart, and it'll be the lyrics making a heart kind of thing. Some funny shit. And that was based off a girl that started going viral for doing that to my song, too. Mm-hmm. So I kind of, like, remixed it mm-hmm. where I did it almost in, like, a, a Disney Channel way. Yeah. Like, with the, you know? Yeah. So right there, that shit so that started, kept, it up. kept going crazy. And I kept spamming it, doing the same shit in different locations. Mm-hmm. And it just, it never failed at that point. Okay. And I was like, wow, I could really... So do you think it was a song or you think it's what you was doing? Or you think it's everything all It was everything. Altogether? It was everything. Okay. So are you more strategic when dropping now? Because that wasn't the first time you were Um a little bit. Like I'll I'll try to like make sure I got one of them lines that's like I'm leaving it there for you to like either think, laugh, you feel me? TikTok started going up. So what what happened though? Like was it like the song started streaming more? Yeah, with Pink Eye? Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, at that point in time, I was still already like you was playing with it, or playing with the app, and like 
but in a strategic way, like fun, strategic at the same okay. time. Feel me? Like I was taking TikTok serious in terms of like posting every day and like and showing people my music and just throwing it out there. So, yeah. But it's just Pink Eye was just the one that like went <laughs> crazy for some reason. So, like, how do you feel about people when they call people like TikTok rappers and stuff like that? Do you think that's a thing? Or do you think that's possible? Um, I think it's definitely possible. I would consider myself one as of right now. You would consider yourself a TikTok rapper? Yeah, because I mean, I I use TikTok the most mm-hmm. to to promote my music. But it's like, I don't think it's as bad as people kind of say it. Like, oh, you just a TikTok rapper. Like, I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay. I was going to actually do you think it's a bad thing. Nah, nah. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Because before it was SoundCloud rappers. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay. Soldier Boy, he blew up off of YouTube. You going to call him a YouTube rapper? Like, nah. Okay. It's not. <laughs> all right. I like the way you think like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so is, that, is your goal to, like, transition from that? Yeah, of course. Feel like you are that. Of yes. course, and it and it's getting there. It's getting there. I'm not even worried about. Okay, that. yeah, I've been seeing the shows. They're fucking with it at the shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, um, so when did you first perform at though? Your um, first ever performance. My like, first ever performance. Ever, yes. My first ever performance was at and they knew the song. a friend's birthday party mm-hmm. for me, and it was like some freestyle that I did to a song, uh, from time. By by uh, Janae Aiko okay, and one. yeah and Drake and uh, my friends pulled up and they knew the words and then okay. everybody else just started joining in. It was lit. Okay, so okay, the song that blew up though, the Pink Eye song, you performed that song. Nah, I don't perform that song. Why? Cause it's just not me. Like <laughs> it's not really like how I I wanted to like come out okay. type shit. So with all those streams and all those videos, you just let it like be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I might bring it back for like for me when as shit gets bigger. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And be like, oh, for me, this y'all is the one this? that started this. Y'all remember this? Oh, wow. yeah, okay, you feel okay. me? Type okay. shit. Okay. I remember this one fan wanted me to perform it, but not that I said no. It's just like the DJ. I didn't give it to the DJ because okay. it just I wasn't thinking of performing that shit. Okay. I think you should definitely perform it and see what it is. Nah, yeah, definitely. I think it's like an attention grabber. Like, maybe if you, I get, like, some footage of it on TikTok of me performing it, it would catch new people's eyes probably. Because yeah, they'd be probably. like, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck probably. is he singing? <laughs> okay, so what's one song you dropped that you feel like they didn't get enough love? One song I ain't dropped. I would say 30 Days. It's getting a lot of love right now, but, when but I it, feel like, yeah, I feel like that should be like my second, my first or second biggest song, because that one, everybody be coming up to me like, yo, 30 days, 30 days, mm-hmm. so yeah. So why you feel like it's, why you feel like it wasn't, why you feel like it's not moving? Well, it's moving now. But like, yeah, it's moving. Not the way it was kind of, nah, it was kind of moving when it dropped. Okay. I just feel like it should be bigger. Okay. Um, It's not. Cause I don't know, maybe I just didn't figure out like the right way to True show market. it to the people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so do you do all your marketing yourself? Yeah. So do you like plan out like I'm gonna promote this song this way or like how do you go about it? I um, I kind of go based on feeling mm-hmm. of when when's the right time. Okay. Um, shit. When it comes to cover art, I just be <laughs> getting anything. You know what oh I'm saying? Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, but. Shit, I try to like, I try to drop a song five days after around there mm-hmm. of when I first show it on TikTok, okay. kind of thing. And I'm giving up the source for y'all. Y'all better, oh, shit. y'all okay. better take that shit so and run with it. Source. So step one, you drop a sound on TikTok. Nah, yeah, I dropped the sound and I post it like three times that day for the rest of the five days, and then it drops on the fifth day. And then you just run, score, and repeat kind of thing. And that shit been working every time. Yeah. Damn, we just gave them some songs. Yeah. Nah, they <laughs> could do it. I mean, they not going to, they might not be able to do it like how I do it, but, but they could, for me, try. Okay. So, like, um, so when is the project coming out? 
when is the project coming out? I've been stacking up songs, <laughs> like, but I'm so used to dropping singles that it's like sometimes it'd be like, I, 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 yeah, I. and then everything is like, dropped. everything is, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna try this year. I'm gonna shoot for this year. Why, why, why try? Huh? Try, you're gonna do it this year? You said try. I should, right? Fucking, nah, try as in like, because like, yeah, yeah. Like, because you just got a bunch of songs, but you got to put it together. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I'm expecting something maybe around August. I'm going to just drop a date to gas it real quick. Maybe around August. Okay. So are you signed or are you independent? Independent. Okay. Are you looking to sign a deal? I'm looking to see what's out there. Okay. If, so, uh, okay. if I get the right deal, but I'm definitely open to signing. Okay, and what is it you think you're looking for if you do sign a deal? Well, right now I'm looking for like a singles, like a singles deal. You don't want to lock in like long term. I don't want to lock in long term yet. <laughs> <laughs> they be wanting you to the project fifteen years, nah, not, not ten years. years. But some, all right, not a ten years deal. is crazy. In five years, I'm gonna be almost thirty. Yeah, but like they kind of they, they kind of help you like run it up. Nah, they do, they do. That's, that's the 30s. thing, and that's why I'm that's why I'm open to it. That's definitely why I'm open to it, like because they got. Help. Yeah, but I'm saying like, what if you did like a this show deal, project thirty songs, some bread? Because I know you anti projects too much. Mm hmm. Nah, yeah, the distro. Yeah, shit, so shits in the, shits in the yeah, shits there though, shits there. But you, but the you, the distros is where it's. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, do you feel like um do you feel like the labels are necessary right now? Some people feel like they need them. Some people feel like artists could do it by themselves. What you think? I think it just depends who you feel like you are at this point in time. You feel me? Like someone like me say right now, like I'm busy like hustling, posting on TikTok, like in terms of like just going crazy with the content, figuring out how to get myself out there and it's working. Um, it might be easier for me to just be like, I right, let me fuck with a distro. Oh, <laughs> fucking yeah, though. It's either or. It's really either or. So you said Some, where you at in your career? Where you feel like you hustling on TikTok? Yeah, yeah, and I already know how to do certain shit on my own. Mm -hmm. But I don't know certain things, certain shit that I've heard, it do be um sparking my interest mm -hmm. with like what things labels could do mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But I would say first, really stick out, stick out with the independent route okay. until you feel like something's right. Yeah. All right, that's that's good. So, what advice would you give someone that's I guess looking up to you, looking up to your career and stuff like that? The advice, whatever it is that you want to do, just be consistent. Do that shit every day. So, I mean, you might fuck around, lose some people because you're so focused on doing what you're doing. But as long as what you're actually doing truly makes you happy, whoever falls off of your, falls out of your path is not going to matter, bro. Like, and I'm noticing that now and it's really like, Shit really going up, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so surrounding yourself by different people, basically. Yeah, surround yourself by um like-minded people, of course. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, like, through the midst of it being alone, just stick out. Just stick it out. You know what I'm saying? Have faith. Everything is right in front of you. You just got to go grab it, for real. What, um, what lesson, I guess, has the industry taught you so far? Lesson? Shit. That. The music industry, not like personal life, like music wise. Uh, music wise, like, like in terms of like what the people, people I've dealt with, artists, the marketing. people I've dealt with. Yeah. I mean, shit. When shit's up, your shit is ringing. Okay. And I feel like that's that's what anything. Okay. So that's really what anything, shit, but yeah, yeah, kind of thing, which is fine, and that's supposed to happen though. It's okay when that happens because 
It's like you develop your um your value. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of what it is type shit. Um, I mean, I've always learned to like learn. Yeah, ugh, fuck. I'm learning to like not accept no like handouts and shit like that. Like sometimes, mm-hmm. um, people wanna put shit right there so they could come back and be like, "Oh, I did this for you." Yep. You feel me? Yep. Yeah. So. So just um, being strategic about, I guess. Yeah, yeah. What's kind of help you accept? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm just making sure. Now you go. And then, um, okay, so do you feel like you hard on yourself when releasing music? Because your first track went viral, you have some that go more viral than others. Um, what did you feel like as a good run for you? I guess you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm. Or you have. I could. I have. Like I have like moments where I'm hard on myself, and then I have moments where it's like, fuck it. You feel me? Because you have you have to have those moments of like. Learning that not everything is going to be your biggest moment, not every moment. So I feel like in that in that area, like you got to just roll with the punches for me. Like, because I got like I got this one song, uh, Tomioka, mm-hmm. right? And it's my biggest song right now. Yeah. And then now nah, yeah, it's going up every day. And for me. Like, I try to, like, throw certain songs out for me, mm-hmm. but not every track going to be that Tomioka moment. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how it is, even before Tomioka type shit. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to surpass that shit. Watch. I'm telling y'all. Okay. So, <laughs> walk us through the making of Tomioka. How was that? Um, when did you make that? Is that an old record you was holding? Um, it's kind of new. It's, it's kind of new, but, like, I recorded that shit like March of last year. No, not March, May. Mayish of last year. Okay, it's almost a year. Yeah, it's about to be a year. I dropped it in July. Okay. So, word. And recording that shit, honestly, like once I heard the beat, like the first four bars of the basically the hook mm-hmm. came to my mind. Right. And from there, I was just going in. Like, mm-hmm. I be, I punch in when I record. So. So you're not a writer? Yeah, not really a writer. Okay. All right, so Tony is going up right now. Um, What else should we look forward to this year? Y'all should look forward to big moves. No funny shit. Something is going to happen. Yo, every week, something new happens. I can't really, like, tell y'all everything. Okay. But every week, something that will blow y'all mind happens. And, yeah. God is good all the time. Okay. So <laughs> we got collabs on the way. Like, what that? What that? Collabs. Mean? Um, yeah, I'm about to drop a Middletown remix okay. with um some rappers from the town. Okay. Yeah. Showing them some love. That's yeah, cool. shout out uh Pacino and shout out Chopper. Okay. So you you're not big on features. You want to like work on your own? Um, I'm yeah, cause like I'm in a point where it's like. I like to work on my time okay. type shit, mm-hmm. but I'm definitely open to features yeah. and working with other artists that's out there that want to work and shit, okay. but it's got to be right. That makes me. sense. Yep. Okay. Work. All right. So tell the people where to find you. How can they tune in? Y'all can find me at J-E-Z-Y, J-A-Y-E-A-Z-Y-W-H-A-T on Instagram and TikTok. J-Easy on streaming platforms, J-A-Y-E-A-Z-Y.